Wow, Bel Air, surprisingly, was actually really, really, really awesome. And now I already just can't wait for season two to drop, which by the way, has been officially confirmed as they bought a two season run right when this show was first announced. And season one was just absolutely incredible. <laughs> What is up everybody? Hope you're having a brilliant day. In this video we are going to be reviewing Bel Air which was just absolutely awesome. I mean it turns the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the incredibly popular Fresh Prince of Bel Air sitcom, into a true dramatic drama and it was just really really great. While it does take a little while to get used to, especially because it is so dramatically different, when you do get used to it you can really appreciate it for what it is which is a really gripping and groundbreaking drama like I said which is just really really wicked and every single character has something really dramatic to contend with and then on an individual basis when they do get together on a family level it is just absolute fireworks and true sparks flying and I just have to say this show was really really great and I kind of wait to break it down with you and also do some predictions on what could be happening in season two in this video review. <laughs> So one of the main reasons that Bella is so successful is that they've done such a phenomenal job with all of the casting, literally spot on. They've selected really great actors to play these more dramatic versions of these iconic Fresh Prince of Bel-Air characters. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, of course, we have to talk about Jabari Banks, who, like I said, was just so brilliantly cast. So much charisma and literally the perfect person to take on the mantle of playing Will Smith from Will Smith the iconic and legendary Will Smith actor and character. Big shoes to fill, but I do feel like Jabari Banks just brings something really fresh and new and recognizable, which is really, really great. And I love the fact that, you know, he was really adjusting to life from West Philadelphia to Bella, and he really is the eyes and ears for the audience into this incredible lifestyle and incredible world. And I absolutely loved it how in the first half of the first season, they really were exploring the dramatic rivalry between Will Smith and with Carlton Banks, those sequences were just absolutely awesome. And then towards the end of the season, gosh, it got even more dramatic when his father came into the picture and those sequences right at the end of the final episode of episode 10 of season one got really gripping and true edge of your seat viewing. They were just absolutely brilliant. Speaking of Carlton, next let's look at Ollie Shalotten, who was really, really great as the Carlton character. At first, you're really not recognizing this character as he is so dramatically different from the Colton that we know and love from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But this time, I think they did something really, really interesting in terms of this character and how he is somebody that plays lacrosse in high school and just the conflict and the way in which he's dealing with the fact that he is a black person in a true rich white neighborhood and the way in which he deals with this, for example, trying to assimilate himself into high school with all of these big white characters and also the way in which he struggles with the anxiety and all of the drug use. So I think they put a really big magnifying glass in the way in which he's dealing with all of this. And then on top of that, he has Will Smith entering this world who just makes everything look so easy and just the understandable rivalry and bitter jealousy that he is facing against him, especially when Will Smith then dates his ex Lisa. I just think with the Carlton character, whilst it was really, really easy to hate him at first, which is definitely the intention of the creators, I feel like by the end of the season, you can really feel for him. And then especially by the end of the season as well, he is then getting really emotional over the fact that Will Smith is now leaving. And then he realizes that he actually needs Will Smith to help him cope. I just think the Carlton character was just absolutely absolutely brilliant and Ollie just did such a good job in terms of bringing this character to life. Next up let's look at Coco Jones who was really really great as the Hillary character. She's less dopey than we remember her from the sitcom but I absolutely love what they did with this character in terms of modernizing her and making her an influencer which was absolutely genius and I feel like a lot of people want to be influencers themselves so you can really actually see the struggles of being an influencer as on the surface it looks like a really glamorous life which it definitely is and they do definitely show the glamorous sides of things but I think it was really really great how they showed the darker side of things and how you really need to be really on your game in terms of reading contracts and staying true to your principles and not getting too seduced by wanting to work with big brands. I think the Hillary character was so great and Coco Jones just really brought a lot of vivacious aspects to this character which really did mean that every single time she was on screen she really was a screen stealer which is absolutely wicked. We also have Ashley in this show as well. They didn't do that much with Ashley, so I'm hopeful in season two they get to explore a lot more with her. But as far as this character in this season, she was really exploring her sexuality and she does fight for a lot of causes. So I feel like this character has got a lot of potential 
in the future. Next up we have Adrian Holmes who was so great as Uncle Phil. This character has been updated since the sitcom as well in terms of being a lot more serious and actually a little bit more underhand as well. He is trying really really hard to get the district attorney figure and I love the fact that they were showing just how shady the politics world really really is and he is just such a strong character in terms of being the leader alpha male figure within the Banks family and really does lead from the front and is not afraid of having really difficult conversations and having really heated scenarios with pretty much all of the different characters in this show and I just feel like Adrian just does such a good job in terms of really bringing this updated version of Uncle Phil to life. Next up we have Cassandra Freeman who was so wicked as well as the Aunt Viv character. I love her from the first episode. She really was a scene stealer as well, just like Hilary Banks was. She was just so motherly and maternal as well, while still also being a really strong figure as well. I love the dynamic between her and Uncle Phil in terms of them being a true power couple, but also both of them are not afraid to speak their mind as well. I love the fact that she is, you know, an older character, but still is longing to really strive for her passions and go for what really will put a fire in her heart and really did show, you know, certain characters when they give up on their dreams for other people and for their family, actually the struggles that they have mentally because of this, and then just wanting to go back to fulfill their childhood dreams. I absolutely love this character. She really is the glue that holds everyone together. We also have Jeffrey, who I absolutely loved as well. I feel like I'm saying that about every single character now, but Jeffrey was so good. Firstly, I love the way that they updated him from being a butler to a house manager. And also this guy is just so driven by his principles. He really was at first Uncle Phil was second in command and really was doing all of the shady underhand things on his behalf. But this character in his own right is a really strong figure as well and is not afraid of speaking his mind and really going head to head with Uncle Phil and was also willing to give up his job for his principles while still leaving in a really true dignified way. I absolutely love Jeffrey and I just really want to find out a lot more about the son that he gave up and just a lot more about this character. I can't wait for hopefully him to return in the second season. As like I said, this character has got so much potential and is just brilliantly acted. And I love the fact that we have a British character through Jeffrey. I think this character, like I said, is just absolutely wicked. We also have Jazz and Lisa, a lot more secondary characters, but still they were developing these secondary characters enough for you to really understand where they're coming from. And like I said, they really were fleshed out in their own right. And I love the way in which they're having relationships with all of the main characters. Like I said, from a casting character's point of view, this show is absolutely wicked. And then finally, I love the fact that we had some cameo appearances from the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air series, absolutely wicked. Hopefully we'll get a lot more of these in the second season. But like I said, from a storyline and character's point of view, this show is absolutely awesome. So we definitely have season two coming. Hopefully we don't need to wait too much longer till this second season drops as I just can't wait to see what on earth is going to happen next. So here are some predictions on what could take place in season two. So we obviously end the first season in a true dramatic form in terms of Will Smith questioning whether or not he wants to even stay in Bel Air or if he just wants to go back to West Philadelphia, if he wants to go to somewhere brand new as well. I feel like obviously this show is Bel Air, so he is going to stay in Bel Air. But I think at the start of this season, he may well go to a different location. And then over the course of a couple of episodes, he is then going to be encouraged to come back. And I feel like then when he does come back, he'll obviously have repaired his relationships with everybody. And I feel like then we can just really go even deeper with his space in Bel Air. And speaking of which, I feel like there's going to be a lot of trouble coming from his father. I feel like there is obviously going to be a bit of betrayal. We always see this, don't we, in shows like The O.C. and Gossip Girl and 90210, where, you know, you get a character coming from the past that has got a bit of a troubled background and they try really, really hard to improve themselves, but ultimately they will always let this person down. So I feel like this character is going to build a relationship and mend all of the bridges with Will Smith, but ultimately he will let him down and he will run away maybe with a lot of money, which I think will be really disappointing for the Will Smith character. As far as Vivian is concerned, with all of her artistry, there is always that artist that is kind of lurking in the background that you can tell really does want to have a relationship with her. And I feel like, you know, she is going to be really successful with her artwork and I feel like there's going to be a big argument between her and Phil, which will ultimately, unfortunately, lead her to cheat. And I feel like then it will be a really interesting whirlwind of regret and she will really go about finding herself, which will ultimately then lead to a lot of conflict happening with her and Uncle Phil but ultimately they'll be able to move past this. Speaking of relationships, I feel like there's going to be a bit of a love triangle forming once again between Lisa, Will and Carlton. And I feel like maybe after what's happening with Carlton going to Lisa, 
Maybe they'll build a bit of a relationship again. And then when Will Smith does return, there is obviously going to be even more conflict happening between all of these characters. I'm hoping that Hillary stays within the influencer space. And like I said, I find this character so fascinating in terms of really putting an eyes and ears into this whole world. And I'm really hopeful. And I'm really, really excited to see this being developed even further. And finally, I'm really excited also in terms of having the Jeffrey character returning and coming back with a lot more oomph as well. And maybe he'll get a new position within the family. And once again, I just can't wait also to see all of the dodgy dealings and stuff that this character is going to be doing with Uncle Phil. And I absolutely love the relationship between Uncle Phil and Jeffrey in the first half of the first season. And I can't wait to see them going back to these type of storylines in the second season and also to find out a lot more about Jeffrey's past. Like I said, I feel like this character is really, really great and I just can't wait to see even more about him. And I also can't wait to see what Uncle Phil is going to do next in terms of his employment. And also, like I said, a lot more storylines happening with the Ashley character in terms of really further exploring her sexuality. So I just can't wait to see season two as I'm sure it will be absolutely wicked. <laughs> Wow, the visuals have to be another reason why Bella was just so successful as it just looks so absolutely wicked. For example, all of the mansion sequences, I mean, every single character that comes from West Philadelphia that walks into the mansion is absolutely speechless, as is the audience, as it just looks absolutely incredible. And then all of the parties, there seems to be a party pretty much in every single episode, and it just always looks really, really grand. On that point, the fact that they were able to film all of those sequences during COVID times, I feel like is really, really impressive. All of the underhand world of the politics space, I feel like that is just represented visually really, really well as well. And just all of the locations, everywhere that they go just looks really, really great. And mainly through the Hillary character, just understanding what the world of an influencer is like, just looks really, really cool. And so from a visuals and aesthetics point of view, I have to say Bella's cinematography was just top notch. <laughs> So the first and most obvious comparison is to compare Bella with the Fresh Prince of Bella, but it is just impossible to compare the two as they are just so completely different and just sit in two very, very different genres. For example, Bella is a true serious drama, whereas Fresh Prince of Bella was just a comedic sitcom. So like I said, both of these shows are actually really, really great. I mean, if I have to pick one at the moment, I would say Fresh Prince of Bella is slightly stronger than Bel Air, but like I said, Bel Air is just absolutely incredible in its own right. And in terms of comparing it to other shows, I would say, you know, it is quite similar to 90210 in terms of showing a bit of a serious take on the whole Bel Air, what life is like in the hills. And I would also compare it to Power, Empire, and Blackish as well. But like I said, Bel Air really does sit in its own category and has created its own identity within this space as well. <laughs> So overall, I'm sure you can tell, I really, really enjoyed Bella. I feel like it did such a good job in terms of recreating the magic of the original, but putting their own distinctive and addictive spin on it and really creating this magical series, which was just so, so good. I feel like it deals with certain issues really, really well, whilst also having some light relief and really enjoyable moments as well. The drama in this series with all of the different characters is just depicted so brilliantly. And all of these characters are so layered as well. And you really can understand where all of them are coming from. And just the scenarios in which they find themselves in, you're really feeling for them. As like I said, you're so connected to these characters. And I just can't wait to see what's going to happen in season two as season one was just absolutely brilliant. And so for all of those reasons, I'm going to give the first season of Bella a massive 7.5 out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you thought of the first season of Bella. So please let us know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.